Good evening. We're glad that we're back together with you again tonight for another discipleship empowerment tip. Trying some things a little bit different and hopefully it will work out, but I see we're having a little bit of lighting problem. But I wanted to have the opportunity to show you some uh, slides tonight so that it would help us in our walk with our Lord Jesus Christ. So welcome you again. Thank you for joining us. And we know as we have been focusing on the names of Christ Jesus, we have talked about Christ and Jesus, also that he is the priest, the king, our Lord, and our deliverer last night. And tonight, as you can see, we're going to be talking about the word mediator, our mediator, Christ Jesus. And I think that works well for what we're going to be doing and what we're going to be praying about later, that we have a mediator who mediates on behalf of us. Now again, to look at this word mediator means to have an intercessor or to intercede, a peacemaker, a go-between, uh, intermediator, uh, arbitrary, again all these big words, and a middleman. Probably the simplest one is the interceder and the middleman, somebody who goes in between. So we need to keep that definition in mind as we think about the next scriptures that are coming up. Because as we think about them, these words then will help us to understand how Christ works on behalf of us and intercedes on behalf of us and is as a go-between or a middleman for us. So we're going to begin to look at the scripture now. We have a few tonight that I think are going to be important to what we need to say. And so because of how we need to focus, you may not always see me, but I wanted you to see where the testimonies are and also where the scriptures are and some of the teaching behind it and we'll see how it goes our first scripture comes from the testimony of paul in galatians chapter 3 uh, verse 19 where he says to us what purpose then does the law serve it was added because of transgressions till the seed and the word seed here is capitalized, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was appointed through the angels by the hand of a mediator. So we see how the seed of promise came through the mediator. Then as we go down to Galatians 3.20, it's just the next verse. It says, now a mediator does not mediate for one only, for but God is one. It's important we understand here that a mediator, as we said already in our definition, is the go-between. So he's not just mediating on behalf of us, but he's also meeting on behalf of the Father. That's why it's interesting when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we're praying, O Lord, that thy will be done on earth as it is already in heaven. So Christ is mediating things from the Father to us, but he is also mediating things from us back to the Father, which is a unique uh, thought when you, when you put it all together, how this mediation goes on between us and the Heavenly Father. Then over in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 5 and 6, it says this, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So Paul is telling Timothy, Timothy, there is one mediator. There is no other kinds of gods, no other kinds of religions. You know, it's just like Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is only one way, there is only one truth, and there is only one life. And the same thing, there is only one God who also is there only one mediator who mediates on our behalf. And we are told that he is Christ Jesus and that he gave himself as a ransom. Now, there was a price that needed to be paid for us because of our sinful state and the things that we were going through as sinners. And because we were disobedient to God, we had to have a price to be paid for our sinfulness. And we ourselves, because of sinners, could not pay that ransom. But Jesus himself could pay the ransom. That's why it's so important as we go to prayer. We need to pray tonight that those people that we're praying for and those situations that we're praying for, that they're going to be set free. But they can only be set free in Jesus Christ. 
because he is the one who paid the ransom. I hope that's making sense, but that's what we're trying to bring together. And then as we go over into Hebrews chapter 8, uh, we're going to find in Hebrews how, again, this whole area of med uh, mediator works itself out. In Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6, it says, But now he was ordained a more excellent ministry, inasmuch that he also mediated of a better covenant and was established on better promises. It's interesting to note here that up until the time we were under the bondage of the law, but as we moved into the Old or from the Old Testament to the New Testament, that's what Hebrews is trying to, to describe. We were under the law. We were under bondage. We couldn't get liberated. But when Jesus Christ came and died on the cross for us, then he brought about a new covenant and a better promise. And a covenant is also made between two people. If you look at the Old Testament, when we see the covenants were being made, it was always with God and somebody else. But now, what is happening, we have God, and we are the somebody else, but Jesus as Christ has come as a bridge in between to mediate on behalf of the situation that we may find ourselves in. That's what his job is, is to talk back and forth between the two parties. Then over in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15, he carries this on again in 9.15, where he says, And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of his death, for the redemption of the transgression under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. God is calling us, and he wants us to receive this new inheritance. But it comes because of the redemptive work of Jesus Christ, and because of the new covenant that he uh, established between himself, God, and creation, or mankind. Then over in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24, he says this, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkled that speaks between the things that then, that of Abel. So let's try that again. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks between things that then, that of Abel. We, we know that Cain and Abel, there was a shedding of the blood, and because of the shedding of blood, there was a... a, a that what went upon the ground, there was a curse that came upon that. And from that point on, we always remember about Abel's shed blood. Well, from that point, Christ comes along and now, who was perfect and is our Redeemer, shed his blood for us. And I want to bring you to a little bit of an illustration here that hopefully will help us to understand. As we've been talking about all these words, we have the word king and we have the word priest that we have talked about over the last uh, few nights. And we, of course, we know Jesus Christ is a king. We know Jesus Christ is a priest. But also a king had the ability to mediate. We know different types of times that in the scriptures where a king would mediate on behalf of the people, between the peoples. That's why he would sit out often uh, by the city gate and mediate on behalf of on an issue. Then the priest was also a mediator because he mediated on behalf of the people and God. And it's interesting that in the middle of this, we have the prophet. The prophet is the one who hears from God and most of the times would speak to the king or speak to the priest what he heard from God and then also speak to the people. Then out of this, of course, comes Jesus Christ. And we know that he was God-man. He was both man and he was both God. And because of his death on the cross, he now brought to us a new Passover and a new covenant. So the new Passover took place because of the shedding of his blood. But the new covenant came as, if you remember, uh, where we talk in communion, 
where this is a new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. So Christ fulfilled. So to be able to have the new covenant, he had to fulfill the old covenant, which was the law, which that's why he said he didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. Why? So because after he fulfilled it, then we could enter into the new covenant, which Christ then gave for us. So then out of that, he becomes our, our mediator and our intercession and, and intercessor. And what I've drawn here is a diagram where we have man and woman here, and then they can speak to the mediator or intercessor, and the mediator can then speak to the God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So there's this communication that's going back and forth. And that's why we pray, so that we can have this communication that would go back and forth between God and man. And the person who does that is Jesus Christ. We see here that in our discipleship principle, for the disciple, Christ is the mediator between ourselves and the Heavenly Father. He stands in our place and he makes it possible for us to enter the Holy of Holies. And that's why we need to understand that we cannot be our own mediator between ourselves and God. We need someone else to mediate for us. And that's why we should never give up on prayer. That's why we should be praying as often as we can to our mediator who then can speak on behalf of us to the Father. The reason we need a mediator and we cannot mediate on behalf of ourselves is because we're guilty and disobedient and have become sinners. And that is the problem. So the Father sent forth His Son, Jesus Christ, that we know in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. He sent His Son to shed His blood, but then also to mediate for us, to be that go-between, so that we ourselves could now be, as it were, uh, part of the priesthood, where we could enter, as we see here, the Holy of Holies, and come before our Heavenly Father, and He, through Jesus Christ, who had paid it all the price for us by shedding His blood. Well, we come to this uh, final uh, thought when we come to look today at the, today's discipleship focus. We have a, a living mediator, and that's, that's what we've got to grasp first, that we have a living mediator who we need to communicate, and that is key. Uh, I believe so often that a five-minute prayer or, you know, yes, when you're under a little bit of bondage and stress and everything, a quickie prayer is better than no prayer. But I believe we need to be spending more quality in prayer, that we come and seek the Lord and call upon His name, and we pray. And that means communication, talking to our mediator, getting a clear understanding from Him what He desires to do about the situation, and what we are hoping will be done concerning the situation. And we can do that because of the second part, because we have a new covenant. So first we have a living mediator, but second of all, we have a new covenant. And because of that, it's a binding covenant. It's a legal covenant. I don't know if you understand what covenant, but when a, when a, a document is signed by blood, it is legal. Back in the old days, you used to prick your thumb and and get some blood on your finger and put it on the document and that made it a binding document and it's sealed and and it was a sealed agreement well what we have with the new covenant that Jesus Christ has made with us it has become a legal and binding document but he also not only does he shed his blood but he seals us the Bible says with his Holy Spirit and that makes it binding that brings the covenant into effect. And that's why we can come to the mediator at any time to speak on our behalf to the Father. So Hebrews 9.15, as we already read, So those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. I believe not only the eternal inheritance of everlasting life, but I believe of the eternal inheritance where God fills us, seals us, and empowers us with his Holy Spirit. And that's what we need to take into our prayer time tonight. Because as we do, we're going to begin to have prayer focus. We thank the Lord that even already we've had some people that have shared, at least one person that has shared that we believe God has answered prayer. 
but we need to continue to pray and again the purpose of this name just like our king we can come before our king just like our lord we can come before our lord just be like our priest we can become before him just like christ who is our anointed and jesus who is our savior all those names we can use to speak to our god about and tonight we're going to speak to him on behalf of this whole area as our mediator who then mediates on behalf of all the needs that we're bringing to him and so we need to remember that in prayer that as we look at all these different requests that have been brought to our attention that we are bringing them it's almost like a double mediator in a sense here i know i don't want to get too carried away but it, the idea is that we got these that have been shared with us and so people have shared them with us so that we can together share them with our mediator and so we're going to go to prayer now and ask the lord to help us to be able to pray for these various needs as you see there's lifestyle habits re false religion materialism community division where there's problems within the community health like cancer and physical ailments everything from again infections of the brain to uh, eye infections and eye problems and heart problems and and uh, also cancers both in older people and younger people we also need to be praying for our churches that they would see the importance of the power and the anointing of the lord jesus christ and that also that disciples will get back to discipleship empowerment by the holy spirit amen so we're just going to agree together now we're going to lift these up before the lord again together each one of us in prayer not individually but as we two or three come together in his name it shall be done and the reason we're doing this because we one we believe in the power of prayer amen do you believe in the power of prayer i do secondly we believe that prayer changes things do you believe that prayer changes things? We do. And so join together tonight. I believe as we join together tonight, God is going to continue to answer his prayer. And also, not only will he do it, but as our mediator, he'll be mediating it according to his will and according to his timing. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for these that we can lift up all these various needs. Oh God, there's so many lifestyle habits where people are going off and doing things that Romans chapter 1 tells us that we should not be doing. And Lord, they're getting involved in things that are destructive. And Lord, they're spiraling down into a destructiveness that only can lead to death that they do not turn. Oh God, but I thank you that we can come to you at any time and you will mediate on behalf of these people. And if they come to you, you will mediate on behalf of them too. There is never too late like the, like the sinner who was hanging on the cross. Even moments before he death, he could appeal to you and you mediated on his behalf. And Father, we come against all these false religions. Not only the religions that are outside that are different kinds of religions, but Lord, we have a lot of false teaching and false uh, uh, doctrines that are coming out that are not true and are not according to the word of God. We pray, oh God, that you would break those, those false teachings and doctrines. And Lord, help people's eyes to be able to be open so that they can see and that their ears may hear what the Spirit of God has to say to them. Oh, just like in the book of Revelation, that we could just hear what the Spirit of God is having to say to us. And then, Lord, we pray, especially over in North America, for all this community division, or division that is going on between peoples, and it's spreading not only in our cities and in our uh, communities, but also it's spreading into churches and other places where people are being divided. Lord, this is the work of Satan. Satan, we take authority over you that you do not have the authority to divide and destroy God's people. But we pray tonight that you will be bound and that the people of God will be set free in the anointing. Father, we also pray for those who are struggling with cancers, Lord, and other sicknesses. Lord, we pray for those, O oh God, that they would just experience your healing hand. Lord, either that you will bring healing or you'll bring wisdom, but what you have to do upon their lives, you will make it clear for them. 
And Lord, we ask that your healing hand, that Lord, as we pray for the anointing of your Holy Spirit to be upon them, that the anointing will come upon them. And that because of the anointing, that there will be healing within their bodies. Oh God, we also have many requests, Lord, that people are praying. Praying, Lord, for a fresh anointing within the churches. Lord God, that they would get back to the Word and the Word would get back into their heart and that the Holy Spirit will empower them afresh. And Lord, that they would return back to their first love. Oh God, we've got so many wayward sheep, wayward children that are wandering away from your house, wandering away from your temple, wandering away from praise, wandering away from the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh God, we pray that you would just bring them back. And then for those, oh God, that don't even know you as Lord and Savior, Lord, that or have made a decision that not to want to hear and not to listen, we pray for many of those requests, oh God, that many yet are needed to come to you and know you as their personal Savior. So I pray, oh God, that those that have maybe have heard the scriptures, those who have maybe gone through catechism or other kinds of teaching, that, Lord, we're just agreeing together, Lord God, you're going to bring back to their memory those children that have been raised up in the scriptures. Bring back to their memory the word. I pray that they will not be able to sleep at night. I pray that, that God, that their heart will be will be stricken with, with anxiety and fears, O oh God, so that they would look to your word and look to you, and Lord, that you would bring back into their memory those powerful scriptures. And so, Father, I just loosen upon these people your word, Lord, wherever it came, came into their hearts, that it would be loosened, and Lord God, that that word would speak to them powerfully, and Lord, that your word would break the yoke and set the captive free. So Jesus, again, we just lift up these prayer concerns for you and ask, O oh Lord, that you will just bless and use our time together as we have come together to pray now for your honor and for your glory. And thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for being our mediator and mediating on behalf of each one this night. But we give you all the thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you for joining us and becoming part of this time where we can study God's Word. You know, we're going to try to see if this works good. If you got any extra little comments, if this was a little more helpful to do it this way, then Lord, we will keep on. If it's more helpful just to continue the way we're doing it before, that's okay too. We just wanted to have the opportunity so that you could see the scriptures that we were reading and that you could see especially that little diagram how, how it's flowed through the Old Testament, how the Old Covenant was fulfilled and brought into the New Testament, and Christ has given us a new covenant. And because of that, He is truly our supreme, our supreme mediator. Amen. God bless you, and we will see you again tomorrow night. Good night.